Okay, hello everybody. So I'm Philippe Elsass. I'm the co-founder of Flash Develop uh, at night, and uh, during the day I'm doing shit for web agencies. <laughs> and so I'm going to basically sell you taxonomy. So this presentation is not meant to be very technical. It's more about how we got to the current state of enemy and why we why you should use it. Um, so probably <laughs> these slides would be a good thing to share on SlideShare and stuff to promote enemy. So let's set a bit of background. In 2004, yeah, it's very bold. So 2004, we got Nicholas who made M task, and he really, it really, it was really a revolution for us flight developers. And two years later, when Adobe released the SDK, Nicholas decided to create his, his own language with a very different promise, which was to target multiple platforms. First, Flash, JavaScript, and Nico, and uh, then 2008, you contributed the C++ target and the basics of uh, enemy. So it was already four years ago, so Axonemy is not your average startup, which was created a few months ago. And, it's, and things are becoming pretty serious. So last year was very interesting, lots of big events. Uh, all the Flash is still the first kind of indie game platform. It totally fell flat uh, in terms of mobile. We know they are going to shut uh, the Flash player on mobile. And until uh, this year, Adobe Air wasn't really ready to do anything serious. It's, uh, it's been a very bad PR year for Adobe. And you got the memo, HTML5 and tablets are the future. And if, then if you agree or don't agree with that, HTML5 is going to eat flash on the desktop and smartphone and tablets are the future of computing. And during all this time, all this year, Axonomy has matured and is now becoming something nicely polished. <coughs> and <laughs> and it, it's time to use it, okay? We said it. So, bunnies. Uh, now you say there's only just one bunny? What about 500? And then you say, whoa, what is that? This presentation was made using enemy, and I'm controlling it with an Apple remote, which I remind you is not something that you can use with any application. So this works thanks to a native extension that I coded in C++ and Objective-C, which let me control that and add bunnies if I want. <laughs> and we can continue. <laughs> so last year, last year was also great because enemy had a bit of publicity. Thanks to uh, a few people, Joshua, which should have been there, but well, you know, his, his wife is pregnant and stuff, and he was fired, and uh, he couldn't make it. Uh, but he decided by himself to, well, he's a professional uh, developer relation guy, so he made websites, Axonomy, XGS, and lots of stuff on his blog. I'm not sure he's uh, managing uh, Axlang. You are? So, it's, uh, so here's it. And of course, the bunny mark. 
which showcases uh, native performance, and it comes with source, and I know already a few people have used it to uh, learn how to do games and use it uh, like it should. Uh, even, actually, even Adobe brought it back, the bunny mark, to uh, Air 3.2 to prove that now Stage 3D works, because I hope you also get this memo. Stage 3D works now. Uh, and of course, it's starting to now have uh, quite a few good games. I'm a big fan of all the uh, Maibo games. They're really slick. And you go to the showcase and uh, get them. It's uh, really great. So now, let's imagine that you want to make games. You do want to make games. <coughs> so you've got the native option. Where you go, Objective C, C, either mono platform, seriously, who will go mono platform nowadays, or cross platform, but it's C, it's hardly hugely productive, even if it's the best in terms of performance. Then you have at the opposite uh, the interpreted option, which means fully interpreted and not even jitted because on iOS. So you take a cross-platform VM like Lua and JavaScript, and you uh, plug it into a native backend in C++. Now, you'll be lucky if you can extend it. It doesn't quite perform uh, well in terms of code, and uh, as many Corona users will tell you, it's hard to scale and to make a complex application especially with Lua. Uh, as a matter of fact, before Flash Develop, I was making uh, Flash code completion, uh, and it was coded in Lua to script uh, the site editor. And I was glad to switch to C Sharp to uh, actually be productive. Then in the middle, you have cross-compiled languages, which is, if you ask me, a sweet spot where you get a productive language, which hopefully compiles to something fast. Hopefully, if there are not uh, big performance bottlenecks, like in Air, because right now, on an iPad 1, for instance, it's really not fantastic. Unity 3D, obviously, is a big famous uh, cross-compiler, which led the way and performs well, so it's a good example. And hacks, anyway. So now, let's say you're going to choose your technology. I made you a little uh, checklist for your choice. Is it performant on mobile? Is it commercial? Do you pay for betas like Corona? Uh, is it open source, extensible with your code? Does it work also on desktop? It might still be a reasonable uh, choice to have something that runs also on desktop. And is it alive? And do you remember open plug, particle code? Well, these startups, startups have been bought. And if you relied on them for your products, you screwed. Well, Axonomy is performant, is free, open source, extensive, and blah, 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 blah. Bunny. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <clears throat> a lot of people are a bit confused about enemy, about what's inside, how it's organized. So uh, we'll start with a map. When was an example of the iOS workflow. In yellow, your stuff. Your cross-platform code and cross-platform assets. And then enemy does the rest, that is, Use the hacks compiler to make C++ classes. Generate an Xcode project, embed your assets, and run the compiler. Same thing uh, applies to most targets. And it's important to understand that your code 
is written against the enemy framework and the enemy command line is managing the whole process. So the platform, the framework, cross-platform flash like API, display list events, and cross-platform assets loading. Now you have that, you're ready to make games. And then the command line, which does uh, a lot of stuff, like set up your computer to download SDKs and generate, um, for instance, your Xcode project so it can compile on iOS, etc., etc., And all the glue code to load your assets, uh, lots of important stuff, and then handles compilation and running. And it's all entirely hacks and C++ code. It's open source, nothing hidden, no closed uh, compiler. You can, you can and you should uh, put your hands uh, inside all of that. The internals are pretty interesting to study. So now let's say you're sold about enemy and you're going to start. You, if you did flash development before, you should forget a lot of things. Because on mobile in particular, flash is a software engine and we are going to want to use the GPU because that's what works on mobile. So forget everything that is software bound, filters, mask, blend mode, it's hard but it should be avoided unless you have a good reason to use them. And you use images, images, lots of images, and batch the images. So what works well, bitmaps, bitmap fields, and sprite sheets. <clears throat> so the point is, uh, if you're curious, is that the GPU, talking to the GPU is slow, so we want to say, to give a maximum of orders to GPU in the shortest uh, amount of time. So for that we use batching and sprite sheets and if you don't know what it is, you do your homework. Because even if you don't use NME, you're going to use batching and sprite sheets and you have to know how it works. So in NME, it's mostly the flash display list. The only new thing is the tile sheet, which is the batch. Um, so that's the only code you'll see in this presentation. We take an image, we load it, we create a tile sheet, we define the sprites using a tile rect, and then we fill the drawing instructions. Position, tile, scale rotation, etc. And you send it to the GPU. Of course, you want to add a lot of your drawings inside this dual list because you want to do that only uh, a few times and not for each element on the screen, obviously. RGB coloring, additive blend mode, thanks. Thanks, thanks, Hugh, for this recent addition. Because particles without additive blend mode are not particles. So yes, this is really low level because enemy is, like Flash, a low level API. So like Flash, you will use a library, write your own. <coughs> and for what is worth, you check GM2D by you. There are a, lot, uh, a few other libraries coming and uh, I think it's going to be a pretty interesting field and it's something that will have to be advertised on axonomy.org uh, because right now Axonomy suffers a bit of uh, a bunch of little libraries not really well maintained. Uh, it's something to work on. There's OSEX uh, uh, library that was presented yesterday. Okay, <clears throat> now you're ready to go, but before making this last choice, 
You should know that there are a few limitations. No 3D, uh, no, vi no video and web views is quite a deal breaker for many people, so it's something that should be issued uh, quickly in a way or another, even if even on a limited number of platforms, but uh, it's quite a deal breaker for the people who have presented the uh, NME2, uh, especially web views. And also, it's not meant to uh, display lots of text. So, yeah. <clears throat> Good stuff improving and in progress, Swift rendering, for animations, uh, it's, a, it's a great stuff. I think Hugh is working on uh, OpenGLs 2, which will bring uh, some 3D API. I think it's going to be very interesting, very exciting. Uh, Joshua added recently the BlackBerry target. He's like that. He discovers a new platform. Say, hey, I'm going to make enemy works on it. Uh, and uh, a few native extensions need to be polished and made a bit easier. I'm thinking about NMX, which is a, a very important building block of mobile apps. And uh, right now, I don't think you can just say, okay, I slip NMX and it's done. So, um, a bit of polish. Uh, by the way, native extensions aren't that hard to make. It was my first native extension ever, and it took me an evening to have it working. And anyway, you should learn C++, you plan to. Okay. And Objective-C. Objective-C is cool. I, I like Objective-C, but it only works on uh, one platform, so it's uh, silly. Hmm. What about the web? We've talked about uh, native, mobile, and uh, well, that's the web also. Yes, 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 enemy does target Flash, obviously, because the uh, enemy was designed around the Flash. Classic display list. So this is both uh, a virtue and um, a flaw because it's going to be highly impossible to um, make something based on stage 3D because uh, the API, the enemy API is the complete display list and uh, it's impossible to rebuild the complete display list using uh, stage 3. Nobody, uh, no, no library tries to do it and it's, uh, so it's a problem and uh, also the tile sheet isn't quite adapted to uh, the flash display list actually. So it's a basic one that doesn't work so well. Then HTML5, you got the memo, HTML5 is the future. And I think it's a very exciting target since the GIS and the recent hex compiler improvements like source mapping and uh, dead code elimination. It's really uh, going to be very interesting to see how it grows in the future. There's a lot of potential in, uh, in the HTML5 target. Um, then again, 2D no 3D, uh, probably the backend could be improved to uh, use WebGL in the future, I think that, or full canvas, because right now it's a mix of DOM and Kablas, which is a very good thing for performance on uh, lower end devices, but uh, with, the, with the modern uh, web browsers where canvas is highly accelerated, it might make sense to now have something fully based on canvas. Also, no tight sheet, no draw shrinkons. That's a small limitation. Again, um, tight sheet doesn't quite fit with uh, HTML5 model. Source mapping, if you didn't see what it is, it's freaking mind blowing. Look, it's hack code in Google Debugger, Google Chrome Debugger. Wow, that's crazy. It really works. A few words about the future of web targets. I think enemy needs uh, an additional, simpler uh, batching API, API, which would be based on tight sheet and which would be friendlier with 
Flash and HTML5. For instance, in Flash, you could do batching quite well uh, by using a lot of bitmaps. Uh, but right now, with the, mo the, the way TypeSheet is designed, it, it doesn't work. And also, probably, it would be uh, reasonable to have something like that uh, for to, to, to make an HTML5 version. And about Flash, I don't know. You tell what you tell me. Uh, we can discuss that. But is Flash worth putting a lot of work on? As we know, it's kind of on its way out. And if you really, really want to target Flash, well, just do hack Swift and don't use NME, and you use Stage 3D and all the good stuff. And you can do Flash uh, with the latest API, but it's very it could be very hard to, for an enemy to, to switch to an accelerated backend for Flash. It would be a huge, huge uh, work, and uh, I wouldn't say that it's worth. So that's it. Like. question no you all know enemy already so it was kind of uh, easy sell do oh yeah 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 I tend to uh, to release uh, the um, the native extension for the Apple remote and uh, the slide it's it's really basic it just uh, fades off uh, it, it's actually uh, something that uh, Joshua wrote he sent me, it, it's a few classes, it's really uh, swapping bitmaps on screen, so it's nothing fancy. Uh, I just hooked the, the remote stuff, and uh, it was really fun, it really not that hard, so. Show what? Uh, mono develop. Uh, it's something that uh, Joshua is working on, and I'm kind of coaching him because I I can't stop uh, working on IDs. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of that. Uh, I even improved uh, a bit uh, Sublime text, the import generation because I'm using it a bit on Mac for iOS and uh, well, I see something broken. It's an IDE. Uh, I have to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, now um, keep your expectations for mono develop not very high at the moment because it's only hacks display, so it's not mm, more elaborated than what you get on Sublime Text or uh, TextMate or whatever. Um, it may grow. It may uh, we we may port back. Uh, stuff from Flash Develop into Mono Develop. Uh, so it's something we're discussing with Joshua, but it's probably um, uh, also a lot of work. So um, it probably needs a few people to get involved in Mono Develop because Joshua, as I know him, uh, jumps a lot on various subjects. So it's something that needs a team, like many things done for Axe, uh, too many things are done by one guy, and uh, many projects and many projects should have a little team, which wants to be involved uh, in the long term. And uh, model develop is worth this effort now that the basics are done uh, by Joshua. But I think it should be adopted by uh, uh, a few people interested. So if you like C Sharp, uh, which is an absolutely great language, and by the way, uh, Koei, uh, I would just use C Sharp for Unity, but uh, that's, I'm an old uh, C Sharp user. It's like uh, JavaScript. Uh, I've been coding JavaScript for 10 years and I still have a hard time using hacks for that. 
but well, we'll see how it uh, goes. Uh, for now, I like uh, enemy on mobile. It really works. So is that one? No. Starling. Do you, do I know about Starling? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, Starling. Uh, I even made an extension for Starling. Uh, yes, Starling does reproduce the display list, only very partially. It's a very uh, limited uh, reproduction of the display list, and just like a Node, uh, Node 2D, uh, ND, ND 2D, and uh, all these frameworks, they obviously use the same display list metaphor, but it's far from being complete. And they rightfully, and they, they are completely right to not follow the display, is, the display is exactly because it's just a crazy uh, work to if it was simple Adobe, Adobe would have done it maybe or not <laughs> yeah. you know the Adobe, Adobe AI is already getting there and uh, I know they're working their ass off to make it work and uh, uh, they, they may resolve most of the bottlenecks so um, huh? yes yeah, the damage definitely has been done and uh, I initially had a slide about uh, that thing uh, asking if can, can we still trust Adobe uh, once uh, now that they uh, shut down uh, Flex, uh, shut down the Linux support, shut down uh, Flash on mobile. Uh, they can shut down Air next year if it doesn't work in a, well enough for, uh, for them in terms of money. And if they shut down Air, nothing. You get nothing. But they, they are really motivated and they really want it to work, I can tell you. That's all? That's cool? Let's go eat.